Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to build on the stuff we were doing last week with the Jade Pillow Gate and extend it to the spine and, uh, uh, and, and the importance of, of a healthy spine in this whole process. So it's something that, uh, and we talked last week about, about the Jade Pillow Gate and the importance of, of unkinking the hose at the base of the skull so that the energy and the circulation would freely move into and out of the brain. And so that it allows the whole system to work more as a, uh, an integrated unit and takes it to a whole new level of, uh, of ability as well as, um, you know, uh, spiritual power is a, a term that Chiang Mai Ching used. So the, uh, we start with the idea that, that um, in the eyes of nature, be, the big system, you know, humans are useful only to the extent that they can procreate and keep keep the game going. So once we once we adapt to that, it's like, oh, okay, once we're past that point of uh, procreation, nature really doesn't care about us and has built in uh, functional obsolescence into every one of these these units. And if we want to hang around a little longer than our three score and ten and and have a good time doing it, then it's something that we have to do, we have to work at. It's something we have to put effort into and and some degree of uh, of uh, wisdom and and cleverness in order to keep keep the game going. And in the Taoist tradition, they spent a lot of time trying to figure out cheat codes that to pursue immortality. And immortality, I think, was more of a uh, a direction rather than an actual concept. Although the Taoists, uh, you know, and the 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 big the big uh, heavy hitters of uh, of the uh, of the ancient Taoists were not called saints. They were called uh, Im the Taoist immortals. So you can see how there, there's a real emphasis on that. And uh, to bring that more into what's uh, relevant to us is is how long can we maintain good health and keep keep the game going so that we're enjoying every moment of life and along at the same time by doing that can we enhance our awareness and enhance our ability to to function in life at, at a higher level and it's i I don't think that it's something that takes care of itself. That goes back to the idea that that this sort of planned obsolescence is built into the into the humans. We are all moving toward entropy. Everything in the universe is moving toward entropy unless we interject something else, unless we interject consciousness and intention into the uh, into the mix, and then suddenly we are breathing life into something which is moving toward death. And uh, so that the willingness to bring your intention and effort and into it and do it on a regular basis this is what we call kung fu, that is diligent effort over time. And so we kind of move it in the direction where we're we are keep creating life. We keep creating something which is vibrant and uh, and it's happening. So uh, the last week we talked about the Jade Pillow Gate, and that is this nexus point where the 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 skull meets the neck, and so that that particularly at that point, that junction point there, at where the topmost vertebra, the atlas, so just right there, is. Where that meets the uh, the uh, the occiput, which is the uh, 
the big bone at the back of the head. And learning to pivot from that point, because that's the way we're designed. We're designed to pivot from that. And whereas a lot of us, particularly if we kind of fall into this entropy, we, we kind of like, we lose muscle tone in the neck and we start to create patterns where we have this big honking mass, eight to 12 pounds of stuff here, which is requires a lot of force to just keep it going. The farther, the farther forward the, the head moves, the more the, the, more the angle is uh, at a 45 degree angle, for instance, the, it takes about 50 pounds of force to lift, to maintain the head. So naturally we get kind of tired, the muscles in the neck get very strained after, after a, uh, a long day of, of texting or watching a computer screen or whatever. And so we tend to, to create this jam up where the vital for, fluids that are moving in and out of the brain are constrained and that creates problems for the whole system. So um, what we talked about was to start to reprogram it. And one of the suggestions I, I made was to grab a tennis ball like that and just stick it under your chin and, and go about activities and just hold the tennis ball there and see if you can see how you can move, even if it's just walking around the room, you know, and do that without losing the tennis ball and just notice how much you 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 tend to kink the hose back there, particularly in moments of stress or in moments where you're distracted, where your conscious mind is is onto something else and then it immediately goes back into this default setting. So part of our gong fu is to train the body so that we're opening this jade pillow gate and to be able to allow the the energy to move into the brain. And we're going to get into that at, a, at another time, what happens whenever we do have a lot of energy there, because that's where we get into awakening the niwan, which is the uh, the uh, this the higher center. It's the uh, the niwan is is um, uh, is the mud pill palace is the uh, is the Taoist term for it, and it refers to the particularly the pineal gland and and the pitu pituitary gland, and that's at the center of the brain. And I don't want to get into that today because I want to talk more about how do we feed this so that we can actually do something with with this with this energy with this you know with the knee one so um um so opening up that is is really crucial and one of the things we've been talking about for the few years that we've been we've been doing this uh, this class is that uh opening to the big chi and we do that through getting into a state of central equilibrium so that we're, we don't have to depend on the limited resources that are locked inside my skin, but we're tapping into the big, the big chi, the, the chi of heaven, of the heavens and, and of the earth. And so we become part of a much bigger system. And if we can clear the path so that it moves smoothly, along the spine and then we can feed the brain and move into this this state where we're actually moving to what's called the spiritual valley uh, which is but a, a space between the hemispheres of the brain and we create a, a resonance there but you need a lot of chi to make that happen and it also has to be you you have to reprogram your your body mind so that you can tolerate that amount of energy on a regular basis and to be able to to have that as your as a resource and in in, in chinese medicine the two fundamental rules of chinese medicine are one have lots of chi and two circulate it well and so what we're trying to do with that is we're 
trying to fulfill those two prime directives there because that keeps you alive, that keeps you going, that keeps you vital, it gives you that, that spirit of vitality that makes the, makes the game a lot more interesting. There is a, um, uh, a major vessel that extends from your perineum, the point, the Hui Yin point, uh, up into your brain, and so on the uh, uh, along the uh, the 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 anterior part of the spine, it runs up there. It's called the Chung Mai or the penetrating vessel. And there's another way of interpreting Chung Mai, which is actually dispersed throughout the whole system. But it also, you know, it's it's a both and situation there. So if you can visualize it as this very powerful cable of energy power line that's going up, you know, from your from your Hui Yin up into your brain, then this gives you the energy to to get your brain vibrating at a higher level. If that energy is coherent or highly coherent, then it creates a state of awareness which is peaceful and and centered and very clear your mind becomes clear and you open the eye of spirit you open that you know the uh the what do they call it the uh, heaven's eye which is another name for the third eye it they, they call, the chinese term for it is the heaven's eye and and it it creates this this new state of awareness where you're moving into a state where you're able to know without thinking and so we're we're moving in that in that direction with these exercises if you want to you know it's one of those things that i think it's kind of fun so it uh and it keeps me going so uh you know i'm, I'm trying to share this with people so the uh we get that that penetrating vessel and it feeds this and if it doesn't if we don't kink the hose along the way that is along the spine or in the, the jade pillow gate then it flows more freely so uh, everything we're doing is in that direction of getting the more chi circulated better so we're going to uh, do a bunch of exercises which are primarily focused on the spine and we'll lead off with getting the uh, you know, making those those essential contacts with the three pillars and get the chi robust. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll start to play with different exercises. And a lot of them will be familiar to you, but the uh, we're gonna approach them by uh, adding two elements that are we've talked about recently. One is the jade pillow gate, and that is your tucking in the chin just ever so gently so you're feeling the space created there at the, at the base of the skull. And the other one is the tail. So imagining you have a big tail that you're, when you turn, you're wagging that tail, you're reaching with that tail. And what that does is it activates the Chiang Mai as well as the, um, uh, uh, the governing vessel and the uh, conception vessel. So it, it it allows for much uh, much better circulation, and then then we'll start to play with the spine so that we can actually release some old patterns which are blocking the uh, the energy flow. So before I go any any further, any questions, please. Uh, before we go any further, oh, anybody? Greg, you had something? Yeah, actually. Um... So the, the the order that you listed the like to, to generate a lot of chi and then to be able to direct it well. Um, do you advise working on the jade pillow gate before working on the lower gates? Uh, the reason I ask is that in, in my experience, generating a lot of chi that can't go past this point results in all kinds of horrible stuff. I've actually seen you write about it as well. They're like TMJ and headaches and and all this uh, sort of nonsense. So what's your uh, what's your advice on that? I, I'd say do them all 
concurrently and just because your your tolerance for chi will only uh, it will be limited by your comfort, you know, in, in, in doing it. So if you're if you're doing you, you don't force anything. And all we're doing is we're just removing the blocks for the chi to move. And if you have too much too much going on there, then you're you're just not going to do it. You know, you're going to you're going to your body is going to to activate uh, barriers to to that flow. So so my uh, I guess the, my point is that's a lot of what we try to do every week is to just get these all these points going to and just gradually lifting the uh, the system so that it's able to tolerate more and more. But I think it's a pretty much a self-correcting mechanism. But you do have to be able to ground so that yes. if you have too much, you can... Yeah, so Maria said you have to be able to ground the energy too. And that's something we've covered before, but then, you know, being able to to allow the energy to uh, to excess to go through the feet and into the earth and allow the restorative energy to come from the earth and up into the, the system. So let's say, but it's, it, I don't think there's a, as long as you don't force anything, you're going to be fine. And uh, also just in terms of, of nomenclature, you talked about directing the chi and, and actually that's not really what, uh, what we're looking to do here. Uh, I, I use the term circulate rather than direct because it's something it'll, it'll do just fine if you just get out of the way. You know, and it's a, uh, you know, we create, we intentionally create the the vessel in, in a way that allows the energy to circulate. And uh, and so it, it happens and uh, just by plugging into the big G. That's comforting to know. <laughs> Lynn. So um, this is a little bit of an odd question and I know do both is the answer. But um, <clears throat> when we're when we're um, in central equilibrium and we're letting the the lower back release and you know kind of tucking a little, then what's the relationship between that feeling of energy and the energy of the tail going out? It's, I mean, I know they shouldn't be in contradiction, but there's a way in which it just struck me today as I was thinking about it that there, you know, I don't know. I just have that question for you. Well, Fix it for me. By, by reaching with the tail, what we're doing there is we are <clears throat> activating the lower part of our spine at the coccyx and the sacrum. Right. Okay. And since the coccyx is your, your your tail bone, and so it's the end of the line, and it uh, uh, so the the there's a relationship there between the the coccyx in the parasympathetic nervous system and the sacrum and the sympathetic nervous system and they do a little dance and so but by doing that by reaching with the tail and we're creating spinal awareness you know what the Chinese call the yao so you're moving from the yao and uh, and so that that then activates those three primary vessels there the the conception vessel, the penetrating vessel, and the governing vessel, and we get them all going. And again, it's kind of a self-correcting thing too. You're probably going to forget most of the stuff if it's you're doing trying to do too much. So it's a uh, uh, the mind has a way of shutting down whenever that uh, whenever we do it, unless we kind of we kind of uh, overdo it, in which case um, cut that mm -hmm. out. Yeah. yeah, it does now. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, so yeah, so the uh, basically you, what you're doing is by reaching with the tail, you're creating spinal awareness, and oh. uh, and you're getting awareness of what's behind you, you know the your your posterior body, you know because the 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 anterior is is one gets all the love. You know, but the uh, yeah, you know, unless you're getting a massage and you're someone's in there working on your back, you're pretty much not really paying a lot of attention to what's going on behind you there. So this is kind of makes you a whole person. You open up to the uh, to to both sides. 
Okay, oh. shall we then? Why don't we stand up and we'll uh, play with this. Yeah, heads up whenever it's like you do. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start by really feeling into the balls of the feet. We're establishing this really strong connection to the balls of the feet. You know, allow your your body's mass, your center, to be over the balls of the feet. Unlock the knees so that you don't have to be bent much, but just unlocked. And allow your your body to center over the over the balls. And allow yourself to sink down into the earth. So we're establishing a really strong uh, connection with the earth at this point. So it's a kind of a yang connection that it's it's really pumping up the system. Now reach for the crown of your head. So right here at the at the back of your head, and reaching up with that, and tucking in the chin a little bit. And what the, that does is it opens up that jade pillow gate. So you can imagine you can stick your fist under there, and that'll kind of give you an idea of what 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 your relationship between your chin and your chest is, and just you want to get that feeling. And just for fun, just kind of lift your chin and notice what effect that has. And then, then exaggerate the tuck and go down all the way down and just feel that. And then go back and just feel that, that spot there. And if you're doing this at home, you can you can try that tennis ball idea and play around with that. But the main idea is, is getting it so that there is there's a sweet spot you're looking for there which then allows for the circulation into and out of the brain to happen at a uh, uh, an optimal level. And now relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. And go back and, and really feel into your feet, make sure you're still in the balls of your feet, still reaching up with the crown of the head, even though you're you're allowing your lower back to relax and settle. So we're lengthening the spine by doing this. Lengthening and flattening it to some degree, but not forcing it, just releasing, releasing tension that causes it to exaggerate the curve. You want to zoom in on me a little bit? Uh, maybe, not. maybe not. No, that's good because we'll, we'll lose the uh, thing. Anyway, we're so now we want to uh, we want to release the hip joints and just push away from the earth and kind of just spiral down and turn and just feel into that, relax and 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 turn. Just kind of loosen up that that because that's a major uh, gate for energy through the quad. So you want to have that relax and open, still sinking down into the balls of the feet. Now reach out a little bit with your elbows and opening the shoulder gate. So the energy that ordinarily gets trapped by shoulder tension is allowed to, to release and flow, circulate much better. And you'll notice it that your hands will start to get really full. You'll feel the circulation in your hands, and start, you'll feel some tingling, pulsing, heat. Point with your index fingers and feel into the energetic coherence. That is it. Just by pointing and reaching with the fingers, you're, you get that sense of whole body as a, as a unified system. This allows the energy to circulate much more freely throughout the whole system using the connective tissue system. Now feel into your coccyx, your tailbone. 
if you need to just reach around behind there and just feel that feel your tailbone and uh you want to just reach with a imagine you have a tail coming out of that extending back there and this connects up with the spine so you reach and turn your body and just reach with it a little bit and extend turn it the other way so you're creating this um, this extension behind you. You're creating space behind you. So we're emphasizing today, in addition to all the other stuff, this idea of tucking the chin and opening the jade pillow gate and reaching with the tail. Let's do a, a few of the exercises. Some of them are will be familiar to some of you. But um, begin with your, you know, put your right foot forward, pick up your back heel, and we're going to turn the body and but initiate the movement by reaching with the tail. So in other words, if I'm turning to the right, I'm reaching my tail to the left. And then I'm turning to the left, I'm reaching my tail to the right. And do it real slowly so that you can be very conscious of that. Relax your lower back and allow your, your lumbar area to flatten out. You just want to be able to reach and turn and relax your, your body, relax and allow the support of your your leg to do most of the work so that you can let go of tension in your torso and your arms and your shoulders as you do this. You're reaching and feeling that. So we're rotating along the spine. So by reaching up with the crown, we're lengthening the spine and we're rotating and, and feeling that that freedom there, that circulation. Now go to your back foot, feel the ball of the foot there and, and pick up your front heel. And same idea, you're reaching with the crown, tucking in the chin and nice and easy turning. Notice that my knee is not going anywhere. My left knee, the weight bearing knee, it just, it's set so that Everything just pivots and all the action is happening here at the quads being guided by the yao, which is connected to that big tail. And we're just learning to really rotate along that spine. It's a gentle way of letting go of tension in the spine. And uh, in this one, less is more. You don't want to force the uh, the motion, no extra points are getting you know, really reaching around and, and really stretching things. It's about letting go. It's not about stretching, but releasing there. And as we do that, we're starting to train the muscles that uh, that support the spine that they can they can contract and relax nice and easy. And then now go and put your left foot forward, pick up your, your right heel, feel the ball of the foot, and reach for the crown, tuck in the chin, reach for that tail, and turn. Nice and easy. Set your knee so that it's that you have a really firm, strong foundation there. Every time you intentionally reach with that tail, you're starting to create new neural connections through your body, and you're creating more spinal awareness. You start to notice 
when you deviate from center. And just for fun, just do that. Just kind of go to the side and then turn and and it's your and just feel feel how much energy it takes if you if you do that. It's a fun thing to do, but it now go back to center and just do that. We're looking to just create that that awareness of the ease of movement. Now pick up go into your back foot, pick up your front heel, your left foot, your left heel, and same idea here. Reaching that feel nice and easy. So what we're doing is we're allowing the energy to move through us. There's no forcing, there's no uh, pushing, there's no leading the chi. It's the chi is it's going along just fine. All we're doing is we're creating a structure that allows the energy to move where we want it to move. And it's equal parts of intention and control and allowing. Okay, good. So now back to center. And we're gonna open the jade pillow gate a little more by exaggerating by lifting the chin, exaggerating that motion, and then bringing the chin all the way down to your chest. And then again, this, we're getting the full range of motion with the, that, uh, that joint, the atlanto-occipital joint. That's where the atlas meets the occiput. And we're getting a chance to explore the full range of motion there. Good. Okay, now we're going to flex and extend the spine. So that is, we're going to bring your hands up and then arch your back. I'll do it sideways. So you're, keep, keep your knees bent. You're arching your back and opening your chest, opening your shoulders, and then coming down, and then you're rounding your back and sit down. So you're kind of going down into a squat, and then you come back up and open. And down. So notice that the chin is extending and then tucking as you do this. The, the, the spine is flexing and extending. So we're increasing the range of motion in the spine. Yeah, okay. Just pause for a moment and just feel into your body. Feel the circulation that is occurring there. And you know you can differentiate between the circulation of the energy and the circulation of the blood, but both are happening at the same time and they feed each other. They're just different vibrations, different frequencies of energy. But it together they create vitality. Okay, so now we're going to we do a, a set of coiling exercises. So we've we've done the front back kind of kind of motion. Now we're going to we're going to start to spiral with the with the uh, with this <clears throat> with the spine. So first we're going to 
create a little more, a little more chi in the system. And by creating poles in opposition and then extending them in different shapes here. So to begin with, just reach up with your right hand and press down with your left. And feel that really open and extend that. And then uh, reach up with your left hand and down with your right. Inhale as you reach. And exhale. And inhale. Reaching, extending, feeling that lengthening of the tissues as you do that. Reach, feel those poles in opposition, the right hand going up, the left hand going down. Feel them pulling in opposite directions and creating energy as we do that. Good, and back to center. Pause for a moment and just feel into that. Now, you're gonna wag your tail to the left as you turn to the right and reach, rotate your right hand and reach out as you're pressing out, your turn to the right as you do that. Left hand reaches behind you pressing down, and then wag your tail to the right as you turn to the left, and turn, and reach, and back to center, and turn, and reach, wag that tail, reach with the tail, feel that extension all the way from the tail to your fingertips. Back to center. And go into the heels. Well, the ball you're going to sink into your heels and allow that energy to, to ground through your heels into the earth. Continue to reach with the crown of your head, tuck in the chin. Feel that energy. Moving down, down, down. So as we, we, we build it up by creating poles in opposition, and then we throw it away. Because we have a virtually infinite capacity to create more energy. So now we're going to, going to step out with your right foot and then sink into that and then turn, wag your tail, and reach out with the right hand, reach back with the left, and your body goes onto a slant, a diagonal, and you're sinking into that right leg. And then you come back to center, pivot on your left heel, wag your tail, and reach. And then back to center and turn and reach <sighs> inhale as you reach and exhale and inhale and exhale And back to center.
The next one I'm going to do with my back to you, because it's easier for you to follow if I'm, I'm turned that way. So you're wagging your tail to the right as you're going to the left. And your left hand crosses over the right arm, turn, pivot on your left heel, open, bring your left hand behind you, your right hand in front, and you're twisting now. And we go back, and now the right hand goes over the left, pivot on your right heel, and twist. You're reaching back with your right hand, reaching out with your left, and back to center, left hand over the right, and turn, and reach. So this is a dragon coiling posture here. Right hand over the left, pivot, and turn. Left hand over the right, and turn. And back to center. And just feel into that. Allow the energy to circulate, opening that jade pillow gate and there's no impediments to the energy circulating throughout the whole system, throughout the whole body-mind. Nourishing all of your cells. Think of your heels. So allowing yourself to sink down, 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 while simultaneously reaching up with the crown of your head. So everything is very moving down. And now bring your hands down. And you feel in your hands, feel into your arms, your feet. Feel the energy circulating throughout your whole body mind. The Elan Vital, the, uh, the Jing Shen, the spirit of vitality is coursing through your veins, circulating through your meridians. animating the whole system and creating an, an abundance of chi, which then radiates outward from you. You become a coherent energy exporting system. Now step in. Take a deep breath, go to the balls of your feet. Now go to your heels, sink down and ah, release. Throw it away, throw all that chi away and let it go. Empty out. And pause a moment and just feel into the emptiness. Please have a seat. The um uh, there are lots more exercises like that that we can do for 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 the spine, but that's that's uh, 
that begins the conversation. Lynn. That was lovely. And what was particularly lovely was, um, besides the mass amount of energy that I now have floating through me, um, was the fact that I realized I had been thinking about the end of my tail rather than the connection point of my tail. Right. So my tail had been, I've been like the knot as connect. Yeah. Disconnected because I was like sending myself away from part of my body and not having the whole tail. And this, uh, now I have the whole tail, Yay. especially <laughs> the, tail, the close to in tail. So no longer told by an idiot. No, so you find nothing. No. Yes. That's right. So uh, that was very good. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's great to hear that. Cool. Uh, anybody else? Valerie. Um, I found that particularly calming. I, I think I was, you know, setting myself up to feel something different. Um, very expansive, very full but also very calming. She's yeah. doing this. I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> no, no, that you're, you're right. Cause it's, you know, Thanks. it's allowing the circulation. So it's not, not overdoing anything. It's just opening up. I found it calming too, but at the same time, very robust. Very oh, full. yeah. Oh, definitely. Full, so, like I said, very yeah. full. So we kind of um, get into that soft power. It's like not the, ah, kind of, it's like, ah. You know, that, that sense of fullness there that comes up. And over. something that, you know, uh, you were mentioning here and there uh, in the very first exercise where we're on one foot and the other foot, we're on the ball of it, whether you're on the front or the back foot. I was really able to um, discern when my tailbone would just, it was only slightly, but it would just pop out enough that it's like, no, that's not where it wants to be. You know, it wants to be, you know, tucked, not tucked even, but just dropped. Mm. Um, so I was noticing that as I was turning, that there was a tendency for the tailbone to just kind of jut out a little bit. And it, it, again, it goes back to patterns, right? Mm -hmm. So just noticing that pattern uh, to how I would do that was, was very helpful. Because, you know, we do these things and if we don't pay attention, we miss those little nuances, you know? And like I said, you know, maybe it's an eighth of an inch, maybe it's not even that much, but it was enough to catch my attention that uh, it's, it's kinking things, you know? So I was able to unkink it. So that was good. Good. These all these exercises can be done, you know, to some real benefit just as a calisthenic. You know, you're just just doing it just as a to to loosen up and to to move things around. But whenever you do what we just did, which is to slow it down and make it into a meditation, then oh, the whole whole new world opens up with them. You start to say, oh, okay, these nuances start to appear that um, we didn't notice because we were driving by at 80 miles an hour and, you know, and uh, it didn't, didn't get a chance to, to notice what's going on in our, in our haste. Scott. <laughs> I was shocked how many times I had to keep adjusting my my chin and keep tucking my chin in. It Yay! Was, it was I couldn't believe how much, but yeah, I'm at a thousand degrees now. <laughs> that's yeah. that's terrific to to have that awareness is 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 huge just to get that because you know I, I think I mentioned last week you know I've been doing that for about thirty years now. Mm -hmm. And I still have to <laughs> correct. I still have to, you know, it's a conscious intention, 
a conscious decision, you know, to 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 do it over and over and over again because I know, oh, it feels better when I do. Mm -hmm. Valerie. And I think that that's a very wonderful thing. You know, you've been doing something for 30 years and you still catch yourself, you know, having to adjust. It's to me, it's something that you can't take it for granted that, OK, I got it. I'm a master at this. I can just do it all the time. Nah, you're not paying attention enough. In my opinion, that's how I see it. No, no, but, no, I'm absolutely, absolutely right. That, I think it's I think it's marvelous that there's there's a game that you get to play all the time. And every time you do, you get this little hit of yeah. <laughs> of Jing Shen, you know, just but just by just that little adjustment there. It's like zing, you know, there's a reminder of your, you know, that that urge toward immortality, even if it's an, an unattainable endpoint. It's that urge is there and it's, ooh, you know, it's, yes, you're creating something positive in life. Oh, yes, you want something? I was just going to say what, what Valerie was saying about making those little nuanced minor adjustments. I think that it's like when you, you can tell you you're not on the sweet spot. And if you just change something very slightly all of a sudden you're on the sweet spot mm -hmm. but you can only do it if you know what the sweet spot is <laughs> right mm -hmm. and also knowing how far wrong you can go too knowing knowing the full mm -hmm. range and like knowing the whole spectrum and then knowing okay where's where's the sweet spot in that so it's uh it's 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 a a, a perennial dance and it seems to me that the the sweet spot changes as we improve yes. right i'm going to use the word improve um you know as it, it's kind of like you can only get it to a certain point and oh okay this feels really good right. well guess what if you make it a little bit more adjustment it can feel better and that that again it's part of the game of it it changes all the time and just gets better and better and better great good <laughs> yeah that's what I was going to say is that it, it, you hit a sweet spot and and it is a sweet spot and it's a good energy spot. And then you learn that life just keeps getting sweeter, right? You know, that you can get sweeter spots. And that's that's the thing that I think is, you know, it's kind of what Valerie is, was saying, you know, just Perfect. seconding that. Good. How'd that go for you, Greg? Uh, that was great. Yeah, some some exercises I hadn't done before, but definitely feeling the the um, the reaching with the bottom of the spine is not something that I've really thought about much, but I could really feel the uh, just sort of the locks down in that region uh, being tested, which was really good. Um, I had wanted to ask, uh, what was my question? Well, I guess I had a couple. One, one of which was, um, are you able to practice in your in your sleep, basically? Like, are there postures that you go to sleep with sometimes that help to keep this relaxed? Do you do meditations on that point before you go to sleep? Um, any thoughts on that? Because I find that some nights, you know, I go to sleep and I'm doing similar types of exercises and just wake up with, the, you know, and other nights, you know, I really feel like I've been practicing almost in dreams. Um, yes. So the answer is yes. And, and the more you do it, the more familiar it becomes, the more you notice when it's 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 off, even while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to even you start to make adjustments even while you sleep because the sleep is just happening. It's just a you know a, a different level of awareness there. And the more you bring this into your pre-conscious, the more you're able to access it from that sleep state as well. But uh -huh. but when going going to bed, you know you you line things up in a way. And you consciously acknowledge that's what I want to feel like. So it's kind of like self hypnosis in a way. You're you're establishing an intention in your subconscious mind to say this is what we're looking for, kids. And then your your body mind can can adjust to that as uh, uh, as you're sleeping. Uh huh. Um. 
my my other question was in regards to finding the sweet spot is do you uh feel like taste in your mouth when you hit the sweet spot like i uh in my experience i feel like a kind of like an electricity kind of taste especially when it touches the roof of the mouth um i was i've been reading about it and i'm not quite sure what to make of it and was curious if you had any thoughts on that um uh, well they there is a um a connection between the conception vessel and the governing vessel at the mouth. Mm. So if the uh, um, it, you, you can imagine the energy arcing there, if you're sensitive enough to it, as it's you know it, as it leaps across that that gap. Uh, uh, a pattern that a lot of us do is to put the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. So mm -hmm. that doesn't you don't get that arcing feeling. It's it's it, you get a it's more of a solid connection. Uh huh. I see. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like it gets sucked up almost when uh, the energy is moving upwards. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Try that. Try just try grounding it with your tongue and and see if that uh, that changes anything. Yeah. In the uh, in Yogananda's tradition, they do they push their tongue up above the soft palate. To touch, uh, yeah, you, don't, you don't have to do that. You could do the <laughs> on the yeah, 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 right, right behind yeah. the teeth. Yeah, that's usually where it goes for me as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. There is, a, there is, you know, I, I'm familiar with that that tradition there of of, of I think we call it the uvula, you know, to yeah, yeah. All mm -hmm. the, to train it so it goes back there. I even tried doing that for a while, and I said, Nah, that's not not the direction <laughs> I want to go with this. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> But uh, uh, yeah, just put it behind the behind the teeth, and that's that's all you need. Because the whole Taoist thing is is less is more. So it's like uh -huh. you, you try to you know, try to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we're about ready to wind up here. Any uh, any other thoughts or questions or ideas? Okay. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Maria. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Greg. Good to meet y'all. Come by anytime you want. You know. yeah, I will. The time Come difference by. is going to be a, a thing, but I'll see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.